YouTube! Welcome to day 16 of my birthday countdown vlog. 24 more days until I turn 40. And you'll notice today I'm not wearing glasses because I can't find them. So um, I can't even see myself in the viewfinder very well today. So um, hopefully I find them later. Um, anyway, so the year is now 1996. Um, I started off that year as a substitute teacher in the Chicago Public Schools. Um, and that was that was actually a really good experience for me. I think I actually learned more about teaching uh, during the four months that I was a substitute teacher there than I did in the full year I did as a student teacher. Uh, not to say that I didn't learn a lot as a student teacher, but I was in a single classroom uh, for an entire year, first half observing, second half actually taking over as the student teacher. But with the substitute teaching, I was put in many different classrooms, uh, many different ages, and it really allowed me to learn a lot about how to work with children of different ages and things. And since in Illinois I was certified um, kindergarten through um, ninth grade, which is insane in my opinion, um, I wanted to expand uh, my ability to teach. Um, I wanted to actually have a classroom with the younger students for second grade, that kind of thing but um, that wasn't always possible to find and so um, broadening my horizons was a good thing so I really enjoyed that experience and the number one thing I learned out of all that was that the amount of respect um, that the principal showed to his staff and students was um, directly correlated with the amount of um, respect that he then received from his students and the amount of respect the teachers receive from the students. Um, I, I learned, I saw that very much where the principal, if he just, he or she really didn't care, and you could really feel that they didn't care, the kids didn't care, and it was just chaos. Um, in the schools where the principals truly did um, appear to care for the, uh, the staff as well as the students, and took time out to, to be in the hallways and talking to the kids and everything. Uh, the kids were much better behaved. Um, it was a very palpable difference um, between all the different schools that I visited and, and um, subbed at during that time. Um, anyway, so then in April, um, I moved out to Colorado. Um, as you, uh, If you've watched my other blog vlogs know, um, I was dating a man from the Netherlands at the time, and he was in the U.S. He um, had been in California originally doing um, his master's thesis work through HP Labs. And when he was completed with that, um, he couldn't get a position at HP Labs just because he was a master's student and not a Ph.D. candidate. And HP Labs only hires Ph.D.s, or at least they did at the time. And instead, uh, he ended up getting hired at HP um, and transferred to the Colorado office. Um, and so he ended up moving out here, and I decided, you know, it, it would be easier to stop being long distance and to be in, um, in the same area. So I decided to move out to Colorado, and we ultimately decided just to move in together. Uh, we've been dating two years at this point, and it felt like the right time to do that. Um, he rented a duplex, um, one half of a duplex, and um, as soon as I was able to join him, I did. I, I waited until after the Easter holidays so that I could spend um, that time with my grandmother and my mother. Um, I wanted to celebrate one more holiday with my grandmother before moving uh, so far away. So that's what I did. and. Um, that was cool. It was, it was an interesting adventure. Um, I was kind of scared and nervous because I didn't know anybody in Colorado other than uh, my boyfriend. And at the same time, it felt good to be getting away from some of the family drama I had been dealing with over the years and getting away from Chicago, which was so expensive. Um, I wasn't making very much money, and so it was it was hard to it was hard to make ends meet in the city because it was so expensive. So moving to an area where things were less expensive and things. And I moved out here. I did not have a teaching position lined up. Um, I still needed to finish my I had finished my certification exam and passed the certification, so I was certified in Colorado. But then 
um, I, in order to um, work for the local school district, I had to physically come out and fill out the paperwork and, and go through the orientations and all these things. And they tended um, to only hire out of the, the sub pool. Uh, they didn't just hire candidates just raw off the street. And so the first thing I did was sign up for their sub pool. Um, although by the time I came out here, it was near the end of the school year. And um, I knew that I was going to need um, other work to tide me over until the next school year. Um, I initially did some temp work. Um, I know I did a six month, uh, not six months, six week stint at HP doing um, copy editing basically. And that was kind of fun. Uh, it was something new and it was the first time ever working at a tech company in a, in a corporate environment. And I really kind of enjoyed that. Um, and then after that, I just couldn't find anything. Um, I don't know if there was just, there was pro it, it was probably just some kind of economic thing going on at the time and just not a lot of demand for tech uh, contractors at, at that time. And so I ended up working at JCPenney. That's when I, I was in JCPenney shopping one day. Uh, I think I needed um, a, a winter coat or, or I needed something. And I saw that they were hiring, so I said, well, let me fill out the application. And, and they called me back and they said, well, yeah, come, come in for an interview, which I did. And as soon as I sat down, um, the lady who was interviewing um, immediately said, you do realize you're overqualified, right? <laughs> because I had a bachelor's degree. And I was like, yes. However, I have bills to pay. I will do what I need to to pay my bills. While I was living with my boyfriend, um, so it was, and, and he'd been paying the rent up until I moved in, and he was okay with me not contributing to the rent right away. Um, he was not about to pay my credit card bills. Um, I, at this point, I was still in that $25,000 debt credit card issue and trying to pay that off. And it's kind of hard to pay down credit cards when you don't have a job. So I was like, you know, I just, I need to pay my bills. So I, that's how I started working there. And I worked there for a total of eight months. And then yesterday I talked about, you know, how I transitioned from that into the tech writing internship and, and going on from there. Um, working at JCPenney was interesting, um, although at times it was mind-numbingly boring. Um, I am, and, and I don't mean to sound arrogant about this, but I'm a very intellectual person, and I like having very intellectual um, conversations and, and reading and, and researching and things like that. And so um, spending my days folding underwear and making sure that people weren't shoplifting um, and then the, um, the full-time permanent staff at JCPenney who spent more time talking about their favorite soap operas than their favorite science magazines um, just drove me to distraction. I, I was definitely not into some of those inane daytime shows and, and that kind of thing. And so um, I was very motivated to get out of that situation. Um, although I was hoping um, to eventually go back to teaching. Um, my hope was that I could get a schedule at JCPenney so I could work evenings, which I did, um, and that would allow me to do um, substitute work uh, during the day. And when the school year started, um, that's what I was hoping, as I was hoping I'd start getting substitute assignments, and I didn't. Um, I got called twice. and. That was it. I mean, the amount of subs out here far exceeded the demand for the subs. Let's put it that way. Um, there were far too many people trying to get into the school district. Um, this being university town and constantly pumping out new um, candidates, uh, it made it quickly apparent that I needed to get a degree locally um, to even have them look at me because I had a degree from out of state, I was at from out of state, and they really were preferential to people who graduated locally. Um, and so I thought, well, let me get a second BA in um, education. And so I started doing all the paperwork for that and, and waited until um, the following year to start the program so that I had the one year of residency and I could avoid the out-of-state tuition that I would have otherwise had to pay, um, which was fine. Um, I was willing to wait um, to get my foot in the door. And as I said yesterday, things obviously changed. I, I actually went into a completely different major by the time I actually started the program and then switched my concentrations later on. Um, 
so yeah, anyway, so we got the big, big thing was just moving out to Colorado and trying to make ends meet uh, and, and, and work. And then, oh, and the other thing I did that year was uh, because I was working at JCPenney and it was so mind-numbingly boring and I was only able to get 20 hours a week uh, on the schedule because I was not a permanent staff member, I was only, um, I wasn't, I wasn't senior, let's put it that way. The senior staffs um, were, had the option of working full-time 40 weeks, 40 hour weeks if they wanted to. And uh, those of us who were junior um, did not have that option. 20 hours was the max that we could do. And so um, when I came home, and during the summer I worked days and then, um, then came home in the afternoons, although I switched to an evening schedule once the school year started. Um, I, all we had at home was a Unix computer. Um, as I said, my boyfriend was working at HP and he had, he got, he was able to bring one of his HP um, Unix boxes home so that um, if there was a crisis happening, he could just log on and use the Unix computer and get some work done even from home. Although most of the time it, he worked in, from the office. So when he wasn't there, uh, I could use that computer to browse the web. Um, he did have uh, a browser on it, but that was about it. it really, I really couldn't do much. I could browse the web and I could chat on IRC. And that was it. And that got to be a little boring after a while as well. And like I said, I wasn't into the daytime uh, TV shows. And, um, you know, I, I, I could read books and things, but eventually I was like, I need something more challenging. And that's when my boyfriend said, hey, well, why don't you make your own web page? And he kind of showed me how to get, how to look at the code of a web page. He says, well, if you just look at how a web page is built, just look at the code in the, in the background. You know, maybe you can figure out how to make your own. And so that's what I did, and he gave me access to, um, originally it was Netscape Navigator 3.01 Gold, and it had its own little web page editor, um, but I found it very limiting and very frustrating. I couldn't, I, I saw these other web pages doing things that this tool wouldn't let me do, and I, and I told my boyfriend, it's like, this is just too limited, what else can I do? And that's when he showed me how to look up the code and write my own code, and um, showed me how to use um, a GUI version of Emacs, which is a uh, text editor in Unix. And so that's how I started um, my very first web page, was uh, writing my own HTML. CSS didn't even exist at the time. And my very first attempt was your typical mid-1990s web page where it just kind of scrolled on forever. Um, every new kind of topic was just, you know, I had a, a horizontal line and a new topic and a horizontal line and a new topic and so it was just kind of this long scrolling page and it was very pink. <laughs> Which I would never do a pink page ever again. Not to mention, you know, not having navigation or any of that. I mean, it's just, it, I, I cringe just remembering it these days. But I was very proud of myself for doing this because um, he didn't really help me at all. I mean, I, he just showed me how to find the code and, and just let me have at it and I had to figure it all out on my own and within a week I figured out how to build a page and by the next year I knew how to build entire sites and I started using navigation and I played around with frames a little bit but I quickly found that frames really sucked so I kind of um, agree with Nielsen on, the, on why frames suck um, so I, I quickly abandoned using frames for websites uh, in general and I don't know, I just kind of had a lot of fun with it and I just kind of kept developing it and it was, an, it was a good intellectual challenge to keep me stimulated while I was working at JCPenney, uh, which I did throughout the end of that year and in, into the early part of the next year. So, and that's basically how I started in my whole career was just, you know, I was bored and I needed something to do so I learned HTML and started making web pages and the rest of my career kind of, kind of went from that. Alright, well, until tomorrow, bye.